Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Can I hear a acknowledgement? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, good afternoon, sir. afternoon sir. Okay, good. That means we are connecting. Good afternoon again. And uh, our lesson for today is uh, part of module two. You, we have already, you have done already module one or unit one and then lesson, uh, 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 several lessons from there. And then I, uh, you have also done yeah, a lecture or you have seen the lecture on a uh, lesson uh, 2.1 uh, just last week. And then this time we are going to have our lecture in module, I mean, lesson 2.2. That is the evolution of agribusiness and its challenges. Okay, the evolution of agribusiness and its challenges. Now, after this lecture, now after this lecture, uh, you, you are expected to be able to explain how agribusiness has evolved. How your agribusiness has evolved, both uh, as a what well, as a uh, field of discipline, or as a uh, for example a uh, a business activity. Okay, how, how how everything evolved in agribusiness. No. Now today, uh, agribusiness is no longer centered on the farm. It's, it's agribusiness is no longer centered on the farm. As we have, as we have discussed last time, no. As we have discussed last time, agribusiness is more than agriculture, right? It's more than agriculture. In fact, agriculture is just one segment of agribusiness. There are other parts of agribusiness that are not essentially agriculture. That is manufacturing, and that is also uh, like uh, selling products that are not coming from agriculture, but it is used as input for agricultural production. And uh, there are also like uh, activities in agribusiness that are actually from the vintage point of uh, business, it's almost like a pure business. But what you are selling is products from agriculture and that makes it agribusiness. Okay, so here in our lecture this afternoon, we will, uh, we will uh, try to understand and uh, refresh our imagination and our, our understanding, our recall, in terms of how did agribusiness, how did agribusiness come about? Okay, why did agribusiness, be, uh, why did agribusiness become like this as what we are observing right now? No, so uh, where did it, where did it come from? From from the Philippines, from the U.S., from Europe, where something like that? No, so I will also try to uh, walk you through the history or the evolution of agribusiness in terms uh, as a discipline and the evolution of agribusiness as a business activity, okay? As a business activity. Then why did it, it's very necessary that agribusiness is actually agribusiness as we can see it today. Why is there a necessity that agribusiness should be a distinct field of uh, a study from the vantage point of pure business and from the vantage point of disciplinary, disciplinarist or disciplinary perspective. Okay, so that, that's the two things, no? Now, in, uh, we have been used to our definition in agribusiness, by the way. As a discipline, agribusiness, uh, you know, started or become a separate field or a distinct field in itself not very long time ago, actually. No, not very long time ago. It was almost like uh, combined. It was almost like uh, subsumed in what we call as agricultural activities and operations. No, it was only in 1957 by, by in, in at Harvard University, pioneered by uh, Ray Ray Goldberg and uh, 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 Ray Goldberg and uh, uh, Davis. No, and Davis in Harvard University that they they come to present or articulate that in fact there is a distinct discipline or a, a field we call this time as agribusiness, okay? Now from its original 
definitional perspective, agribusiness refers to a related activities that put farmers, processors, distributors, and consumers within the system that produces, that produces, processes, transport, markets, and distributes agricultural products. Okay. So in other words, agribusiness is generally commercial, is generally the commercial aspect related to agriculture or agricultural activities and its products. Okay. So more or less that is the, uh, say for example, uh, notional and definitional perspectives of agribusiness as a discipline. Okay. Now, before it became, no, before it became a distinct field of discipline or distinct field of uh, study, actually agribusiness was already subsumed in agriculture before. Now, starting from the time, even during pre-Spanish era, around the world, no, around the world, starting during the time that people started trading, okay, people started trading products from agriculture, like food, like anything from agriculture. Agribusiness already started as an activity or business activity in or trading activity in whatever form it is it started even before the pre-spanish time why because uh, the the boundary where agribusiness as a, as a as an activity as a human activity where agribusiness started it started from where subsistence agriculture ends okay what does it mean if Production or activity is basically oriented for kitchen only. Okay, if it is for kitchen only, then that is not agribusiness yet. Yes, it is agricultural production, but it is not agribusiness. Why? Because you are not producing something, producing surplus that is intended for trading for for the market. If it is for home consumption, that is subsistence agriculture. That is not agribusiness. Okay. So if you if you if you backtrack further down into the lowest ebb of history, that is when, uh, uh, so let's say, hunting and gathering activity was done by by uh, mankind for survival. It's not agribusiness yet. Okay. But as history rolled on, as population increases, as you know, uh, as uh, human activity also become more and more complicated, okay, then the agribusiness as part of agricultural activity become more and, or became more and more necessary, okay, necessary, and that actually is the starting point. There is no clear cut. Like dating, when when did it start as an agribusiness as a human activity? No, because different countries started from different timelines. Okay, started from different timelines. So that's the, the the cutting edge. That's cutting point there. In the Philippines specifically, in the Philippines specifically, agribusiness as part of a human activity in agriculture started during the Spanish uh, era. During the Spanish era, when during the colonial, you know, colonial occupation of Spain, now during that time, our country was devoted to produce something, okay, to produce something for the king of Spain, Philippines, because we were a colony of Spain, and in honor of King Philip, so King Philip, nangingan lanta of Philippines, na nga money itong origin, or original ano now there is a need to produce basic agricultural product to be sold to the ano to to spain and other friends of the colonial uh, colonial uh, powers that, during that time so uh, there was a need to produce tobacco or tobacco to be sold to mexico there was a need to produce spices to be to be brought to the king of Spain, there was a need to produce a lot of things, no? 
a lot of things. So it started, okay, it started our our uh, agribusiness as a human, as part of human and agricultural activity in the in the 1800s, no? in the 1800s. As early as in during the 1800s, we started trading our basic uh, products to Spain and Mexico, for example. We started trading sugar or sugar cane, tobacco, also abaca or fiber from abaca, and also uh, coconut also. These are the four major commodity traded by, because we produce surplus, because Pilipaman ang Pilipaman ang tao sa Pilipinas ato wapakabot ug 1 million no and then we produce so much also including other products then those that are chosen as of export quality ginadala na ato sa Spain so that na, na established dito ang royal uh, royal uh, trading corporation of the Philippines actually royal trading enterprise it was actually owned by the Spanish colonizer Okay, so it, it, it lasted until now, although we are not limited to Spain in terms of trade. So that started 1800s, the agribusiness activity in, in, our, uh, no, in, our, in our country as a human activity, human and business activity. Okay, but there wasn't any field yet. There wasn't any field or discipline yet during the time known as agribusiness. Basta ma mag Magproduce lang ta, ibalik yan ato. That's it. Okay? And there were four major commodities sold during that time or traded during that time. Namely, coconut, tobacco, okay, what else? Abaca, okay? And of course, you have sugar cane. Okay? So, what about this time? Are we still trading them? Tobacco, wala na. We no longer produce tobacco for commercial or export quantity. But we still trade coconut, we still trade abaca, and we still trade what? Kanini ang uh, sugar cane. Although sugar cane is already uh, no, uh, overshadowed by competition already with other countries because of wrong government uh, policy in the 19, uh, in the in the early 70s, no, in the early 70s. So, that is another uh, subject of, for discussion, another, uh, another course in, uh, in agribusiness or economics. Why did sugarcane uh, remain to be uh, not uncompetitive this time? That's already uh, outside of our discussion in agribusiness now. But these four major uh, products, we are still producing them and we are still exporting them. Okay? In fact, in abaca, we are still the number one producer of abaca in the entire world. In the, in the, in the global market, we produce 85% of abaca in traded in the Aino. Very powerful ang atong position in the abaca industry, even during the time. Why? Because of the booming and promising shipping industry. Katong gigamit sa mga galeon, no? Nagko kayong mga barko sa Spain. Even to nylon, they do not produce that yet, no? Because wala pa may oil exploration at that time. Gikan ng kanang nylon, gikan man na synthetic fiber, gikan man na sa uh, mga oil refining, no? Extract man na, mga plastic. So, ang ilang gigamit nga ano cordage for shipping industry is abaca. And this time, nanay oil exploration, nanay fossil fuel, nakaproduce na sila nylon nga rope para sa shipping industry the same thing ang abaka in demand ra gyapon why in the oil exploration and oil drilling in the oil drilling dili pwede ang ano dili pwede ang ang nylon kay mo slip na si dito dangog na og humod sa oil di pwede mao na nagbaylo sila ang ang nylon ning so the shipping industry ang abaka sulod ni sa oil industry oil exploration and uh, and, and uh, mining industry kay mao inig inighikot di ato sa kanang ilang mga drill mga unsa pa nang ilang mga makinaryas dito di na mo hit plus ang abaka mao nang that is the most important demand even traditional demand sa abaka karon mao nang 
we still enjoy dominance in the abaca industry globally this time. Our nearest competitor, nearest in a way, but like Layo Japan, is Ecuador. And you know what? Ang abaca nga produce sa Ecuador is actually coming from ano from uh, from the Philippines, from Davao. Nang abot mo sa Ecuador, why is mga ayo ang mga American, ning puyo sa Pilipinas o mga ibisang ni mga Japanese? When they stayed here, they were very afraid to monopolize sa sa Pilipinas ang trading sa abaca fiber. Kay simply ma monopolize niya global monopoly. What happens? Ma at the mercy ang ilang shipping industry. So mo to nga nagdala pod og uban og kanting material sa Ecuador da na na nang tubo ngto sa Ecuador and then okay lang gyapon they enjoy about 20% of the or maybe 15% of the global market in Ecuador or in, in the world now <coughs> coming close with Ecuador is Indonesia and also China but they could kayo para sa Pilipinas so that's that's the major export this time na traditional gi kain na export na to abaka and then tobacco na and then we have coconut coconut also we still produce coconut pero our our close closest competitor is actually sri lanka and also uh, indonesia okay and of course we have the sugar cane which is already paralyzed already this time we, our 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 local demand for sugar our local demand for sugar is not is is not even satisfied is really uh, greater than local supply. Why? Because our uh, our sugar cane processing and sugar cane production is very expensive compared to sugar cane or sugar production in Thailand, in China, and even in other other uh, uh, competing countries. In other words, the are competitive ang atong production. That, that's why we need to ano, we need to develop more our ano. So there is a very very important policy error that you need to know that uh, that's a very uh ano, very long discussion in microeconomics also no so that is the history of all these products during that time it was still agriculture and uh, business activities in agriculture that was 1800s until the 1900s the early 1900s wala pag hapon but in the later part of the 1900s, that was in 1957, okay? In 1957, okay, in 1957, the, the field or the discipline of agribusiness keep, came about, okay? As we have discussed in module 1.1, it was actually proposed and articulated by Davis and Goldberg in Harvard University. Why was there a necessity that agribusiness has to become agribusiness as we know it this time? Why? Because agricultural trade has become more and more complicated, more and more complex, and more and more like uh, self-driven. Okay? It's, it's really has become the complexity of agriculture and its allied uh, uh, business has become more and more complicated and technology also has become more and more sophisticated ni adto di man complicated why magbaligya ka og lubi or maybe uh, uh, whatever uh, sugar cane sugar cane magya po nang paliton dito or better yet eh, process dito into here in Muscovado the same Muscovado sugar will go there in other countries but this time if you sell uh, like for example uh, sugar cane or sugar it goes there as alcohol okay and then there alcohol it will also already go there as something else the process the puna into like uh, ethyl or biofuel something like that so it has become more and more complex and technology has more has become more and more diversified and there is a need to disaggregate agri basic or yeah, the fundamental agriculture from the from a very distinct field we now call agribusiness, and that started in 1957. Okay, so recall, no? Please recall them. I might ask you, in the evolution of agribusiness, 
what was the four or what were the four major export products already uh, <coughs> already traded in what we now call as agribusiness activity in the Philippines no four major uh, no, agricultural products traded in the early agribusiness in the Philippines take note of that this is my last ano repeat na ko coconut sugar cane you have uh, tobacco and of course you have abaca okay kana karon dagha naman na nay mangga na nay pineapple etc wala pa na sa una take note of that four na usaray na ko anda na wala kanang tulo we are still trading in the global market okay it was in 1957 in in the US na hit na tao no or na buo na conceptualize ang distinct discipline and study field of study in in agribusiness by whom by Ray Goldberg and Davis no Davis and Goldberg no so that was it 1957 and during that 1957 articulation of Goldberg and Davis they define agribusiness as given in our slides now as the sum total of all operations involved in the manufacture distribution oh, of, of the commodities commodities farm supplies production activities in the farm storage and processing distribution and commodity of commodity and items made from them from the definition alone okay from the definition you can already cite you that will already guide you on in terms of what are the uh, no, what are the major segments or sectors or subsystems in agribusiness from the definition in, in other words you are just articulating the definition in terms of really defining also what are the different subsystems in agribusiness first subsystem is you have the input subsystem which involves manufacture distribution of commodities farm supplies okay Commodities, farm supply, manufacture, distribution of commodities, farm supply. That is input subsystem. And then the of the subsystem, production activities in the farm. That is output subsystem or production subsystem. What else? The processing and distribution. Okay, processing and distribution. That is processing subsystem. And then you have also distribution of commodity and of items made from them. Distribution of commodities, an item made from them. So that means that is marketing. Okay? And then tie them together, the services around them, we have the facilitating subsystem. What we call as the agro services subsystem. So, ang definition of Ray and Goldberg, complete yung kayo ng guide to really allow you to remember what are the the different subsystems in agribusiness. So that was in 1957. About the perspectives of agribusiness. Okay? Just an articulation of what are the things involved when we talk about agribusiness. So you will notice that from this definition, agriculture, agriculture is just one part. That is production activities in the farm. Production activities in the farm. Maurangay agriculture. Storage processing, storage processing, that is processing, something manufacturing na, daily na agriculture, no? And then distribution of commodities, that is also what? Marketing. Okay, that is outside of agriculture. Karun separate na. That is the fundamental definition of agribusiness. So if I say, what is the fundamental of definition of agribusiness? You go back to Ray and uh, Davis and Goldberg definition. Okay. Now, as time as time went by, okay, as time went by, we now have a a uh, another look at agribusiness by Edwards and Schultz. Okay, Edwards and Schultz in nine in two thousand five evolved na ni, 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 ni diversify na ang agribusiness. Okay, the agribusiness in a dynamic, systemic endeavor that serves consumer globally and locally through innovation and management of multiple value chains. Okay, remember now, complicated ng agribusiness. There is global, 
and local market. Sa una, local market naman ta. No? Karon na right? innovation management of multiple value chains. That means to say there are various value chains that we are <coughs> we are catering that deliver value, valued goods and services derived from okay another uh, area of emphasis for the new agribusiness <coughs> derived from sustainable sustainable orchestration of food fiber okay food fiber and natural resources okay no so in here what are the things that we can already uh, see in the definition that has not been articulated or that was not or that were not arti part of the articulation of uh, Ray uh, Davis and Goldberg? Okay, this time an agribusiness is particularly in early two thousand. Early two thousand, you have there is already global trading. Okay, there is global trading, and then you have technology management innovation management of multiple value chains that means to say agribusiness has become more and more market oriented because why to buying on value chains it's a already a signal that it is really value i mean market oriented why because as a man who defines value, it's the customer. The customers define value of your product or anything for that matter you are, you are trading. Now, value change is otherwise known as demand chain. Okay? So that the definition of product specification comes from the customer and we call it, and as, as, as it is articulated through the chain, we call it value chain and it is an indication or it is a clear cut uh, say for example uh, a palatandaan that it is it has become more and more market oriented delivering valued goods and services derived from sustainable orchestration of goods of, of food fiber and natural resources Unders underscore the word Sustainable orchestration of food, fiber, and natural resources. What is that very important emphasis of uh, like Edward and Schultz? Karin three, this one, this part here in the in the left side of your screen. If you are facing your screen, you have the left side here. This actually uh, defines agribusiness linearly. Okay, linearly but here definition of agribusiness is no longer linear in a in a, in a sense no? no longer linear it already it, it already is also time bounded uh, it I would say time series already delay lang linear one plus one equals two okay something like that no so it's not uh, linear it's not linear when it comes to Corona why because of three important factors, no, agribusiness has become more and more complicated in the in the in the early two thousand. What are the what are the driving factors? You have the global market, okay. So, that are the days nga dinhiragita na pelegis ato. Karon, anything you produce, it has a global competitor, okay. That that's why you might as well produce that that. Uh, follows or that conforms to global standard another is technology is becoming more and more complicated more and more uh, more and more innovations are coming into the market why because consumer taste and preference are changing generations are changing like utro na pud ang taste and preference it becomes more market driven okay so that agriculture or agribusiness has to innovate in order to suit the needs of the changing demands of the customers okay kani adto mo kaon ka og ano mo kaon ka og like uh ano you like uh scrambled egg you need to have fresh egg and oil of course you have to fry 
and then in few minutes you have i know you have uh, uh, freshly uh, you know cooked scrambled egg but this time that the lifestyle is different people are becoming mobile okay people are becoming on the go and very mobile and uh, there is constant towing and throwing of people very mobile ang mga tao so what have, what can you do how can you make sure that makakaon sila scrambled egg wherever they go bakwa pa lang ng itlog imo nang dala-dala on bisag asa sa paingon now scrambled egg all, already is derived from powdered egg this time gi powder na ang egg af dia gi powder siya you put that in a bowl add a little water beat it and cook it comes alive like a freshly cooked scrambled egg how can i siya that becoming more and more market oriented because people likes freshly ano nga itlog gi gi kaw gi dry man lang to gi powder gi kuhaan lang water ang 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 egg and then pagluto ni mo pun ani mo tubig ni i beat ni mo itlog ya pun i fry borak ya pun itlog ra so but in a different product format already so innovation is driving agribusiness more complicated in the 2000 yeah plus very important development in the year 2000 this very this worldwide or global concern for environmental protection okay in order to protect the environment we need to produce something from agriculture sustainably okay that is what we call as sustainable orchestration of food fiber and natural resources now when we talk about sustainability or sustainable orchestration we are actually confronted with a time element because when we say sustainable it means to say that you have to produce or use up resources inputs for agricultural production and other purpose in agribusiness in a way that conserves the resources so that the generation that is enjoying the benefit now will have is or will all ha, will also have the 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 desire or will also have the commitment to make or ensure that the future generation will also enjoy the same privilege and the same convenience as we are enjoying now in other words we do not uh, produce and also like uh, uh, use up resources today and compromise the need for resources and technology in the future generation okay classic example mag spray ka mag induce kag mangga mango imong isprayan para mabuwak to be sustainable ay dako kaayo nga ano ang foliage sa mangga to be sustainable na magkuan pa nga na pay makaon sa uh, sunod pa nga generation you will notice that ang mga mag spray sa bangga na adunay side maybe one fourth of the foliage entire foliage sa bangga maybe one fourth of that dili nila isprayan pwede ba isprayan tanan la isprayan mo tanan ana mubuak na tanan no mubuak na tanan pero nganong na ang gibili it is to be understood that you are prolonging the life of the mango tree because ug isprihana nimo hudto na nimo pabuwak tanan mubuwak mana harvest ka pero it will shorten the life of the mango the bearing life of the mango ma exhaust tanan ang iyang nutrient time will come na mamatay ra nag kalit kay mahutla na gid siya nutrient na hurot sa pagpamulak at sebi kayo nga fruiting no bila ra na ka protein cycle mao nang bilin nan gyud og something na apay dahon <coughs> para maka manufacture ya pon sa pagkaon para sa future nga growth path of the mango will also be able to serve the needs of the future generation so sustainable orchestration 
is one very important na ano. So, agribusiness now is actually centered on the global and local or domestic market. Centered also on uh, innovation driven. It's also innovation driven. Yan ang innovation driven man. Para maka maka-compete ka sa market kay kung wa kay dili ka dili ka mo innovate you cannot compete in the market you cannot compete in the market very important competitive na ang market yung mga ingon just quickly mo ingon what is innovation then okay technology di na innovation that is not yet innovation ang technology okay unless from the technology you can create a benefit okay from the technology that you develop you create a benefit okay you can you can really money kita wag og unique selling proposition na ay na ay imong ano US, USP or USB unique unique uh, business proposition no because innovation is what we call as technology plus benefit that is according to Harvard University also technology plus benefit is innovation okay so, innovation. In other words, technology, and from that technology, you are able to serve a specific niche in the market. We are able to serve a specific demand in the market. Then there is innovation. Kung na kay technology, we gamit ang imong technology, then you are not doing innovation. Kinang lang na ajoy benefit. No yung kanga kuan ka na bitang uh, example lang mag develop ko og uh, ano uh, bagong packaging material sa sa ano sa like cocoa water imagine cocoa water na naman cocoa water man good because cocoa water is a substitute a good substitute for Gatorade oh Gatorade what Gatorade ang Gatorade karon ini ini kuan ini ini uh, ano nimo sa Gatorade what is that? Nasilay ta ko banya i suyo kon ra na sa mag, mga mga player. Nga kaning ingo ka nga kaning ako ko ani innovation ni. Eh. Why? Ang akong gidevelop para ni sa specifically for mga cyclist kanang bicycle aficionados no kaning mga tig, tig bike kay magbike na uinom ng tubig while biking no. Nga magsuyo-suyo pa ka mama bangga ka ngadangad ka musuyo no. Nga mayabo pa nang imong ano mayabo pa nang imong uh, cocoa water nga the best substitute for Gatorade. So, sa mga din ang battle yung maghihimo, an innovation. What is the innovation there? Roll on nga ano, roll on nga cocoa water. So, magbayad ana, pahid na sila, ana ni mo, so, roll on good. So, well, bakalit, baka, na ba kayo mo roll on? Panggos na yung mga dila, eh, sige, bagdos bagnos atong cocoa water, pila rin mainom ni mo. At least, na kay market, yun, know, di mayabo, di ro, wala kay spilis. Mahal daw ng, Cocoa waters America, dress ato, yapo lang. No? So, well, for purposes of innovation, maybe check. That is innovation. Technology plus benefit. Okay, so these are the things. And then the, the last thing about this is about sustainable orchestra, sustainability. No? Sustainability. Kasagaran karon, di na sila anang one, one use plastic. Why? Hindi na sila ng one-use plastic. Why? Because it contributes to pollution. No? Hinahanglan ka ng plastic na ma-recycle. Kaya di na mo contribute sa pollution. That is to be sustainable. So, ikaw, nakas agribusiness, nag-study, nag-business ka o packaging, muna-una na kadiana, unsay mapalit sa global market, unsay innovation, aning nga packaging, o unsa po'y ano, aning uh, uh, benefit to the environment. Okay. So that, that is the transition from Ray Goldberg to Edwards and Schultz. Now, in 1957, dito sa Harvard, pero there is ato ni about 1966. That is 10 years after dito sa US. Okay. Now, what has changed then? What has changed in agribusiness since then? So as a system, agribusiness is composed of <clears throat> distinct but interdependent parts that function towards a common goal, okay? In other words, agribusiness has become a system. It also affected by developments in the external environment. Policy environment affected ka ayong agribusiness. Kung maingon nga, 
uh, rise tarification law i implement na yun. so what will what will how will it impact to the rice industry in terms of the agribusiness for rice industry there is a, the, the implementation of R, rtl rice tarification law the implementation of that actually is a is a call for the day it's a call for the day that it's either you shape up or you ship out in the industry what does it mean kinahang lang nga you shape up that means improve your production activity make it more competitive okay make it more competitive improve you have to compete in other words make it more efficient okay it is a call to efficiency <coughs> But the, the, the RTL was not also like just a bubble from the air and nagihatag sa ato. No. RTL actually was uh, already agreed upon in 1995 pa lang. No? In 1995, ang RTL ginadiscuss na na. Ginadiscuss na na sa uh, world market RTL. Especially din sa Asia. That uh, every country is given 15 years to prepare the rice industry for the trade liberalization which will come 15 years from 1995 actually 2010 ra unta ta mo implement the anang RTL no 2010 ra gyud unta walay politician willing to implement that because di nila kaya ang ano wa nila na manage maayo ang rice industry Wala yun. Wala na implement sa mga politician during that time. Kaya otherwise, pildi ka ay nagsunod eleksyon. Hindi mo nang i-implement. Panahon mo, pila na naka-presidente ng Agi from 1995 up to 2010. Kana na unta. Pag 2010, di kaya pong implement kay pag inefficiency sa rice industry. 2016 na yun na. Actually, 2016. Kaya sunod po 2010, di, po, di mo implement. Lain ang priority, ipasagdan lang ang rice industry. So that is really, ano na, walay hanki-panki decision ang kuang karun, ang, 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 ang law na to, ang kuang karun, ang, 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 ang incumbent administration, implement. We have to bite the bullet un, unless gusto ta nga, we will be, ano, we will be, uh, kulilat lang yun ta from every, every time sa atong other countries. Ang ubang mga nasod na to, ng sirit na sila, na kita wag niya punta ka-implement. So, di na po hindi, di na to implement So, ki-implement, nagay ng oppose, pero, ikuan yun, gimanage. Because otherwise, tanos apa man mumata ang rice industry. Pareho na sa kukunat industry po, no? So, there's a lot of story in there, no? So, that is the rice tarification law. Nonetheless, the viability of the agribusiness system depends on three factors. No? Na complex, na usab ang agribusiness, it changed from a simple, uh, like for example, extension of agricultural product activity. Now it becomes a distinct field and it becomes uh, driven by the global market, driven by innovation, and driven by sustainability agenda in the global, you know, in the global market also. Then, the the viability of the entire agribusiness depends on three factors even this time one is vitality of its subsystem okay kung maayo ang 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 production subsystem maayo pud na ang processing maayo pud ang marketing subsystem kung cost effective or cost efficient ang production cost efficient mapud ang processing o cost efficient pod ang marketing Eventually, maabot sa mga consumer, very competitive na pricing. Take a look at rice. Rice lang yan, punta na na to. On sa may, what is the basis of survival sa processing, operate, processing subsystem sa rice industry? For example, milling operation. Kung saan man nga mabuhi, maayon ng atong milling operation sa Pilipinas, it has to have sufficient and ample or reliable supply of palay from the production subsystem na ipagaling dito sa ano 
dito sa kanang na ay sa what what's this from the milling rice milling or rice processing uh, subsystem naan kung nagbaba ang production or ma mahal kaayo ang productivity niya di nila kaya ang presyo barato ra man ang presyo da sa milling oy okay. barato man gid ilang pamalit kun ang inyong production cost mahal nga daan kay inefficient in your production what will happen mo slow down ang production mo slow down ang milling much more ang market mo slow down unya mo taas pa ang presyo kay gamay ra mag gamay ra mag supply mo taas pa ang presyo so that is very indicative or symptomatic of the first factor which is vitality of its subsystem kung mo produce ka in abundance it will make the processing sector more efficient also it will also make the <coughs> marketing subject subsystem very profitable so ana lang na no uh, it's really uh, synchronized and then the other one is synchronized operation of the subsystem so i explained a while ago <coughs> this should be <coughs> Synchronized in terms of time and synchronized in terms of process. The other factor also that makes it uh, more viable is ability to adapt to changes in the environment. Okay, ability to adapt to changes in the environment. Of course, like Juan uh, Carlos, there is a Filipinas, Sigilag Uwan, for example. So, di ka mo adapt sa environment. Kung saan man ipagpag-dry, yung rice, yung palay. So it has to innovate. Either solar drying, rain or shine na dryer, na tabunan lang plastic, pero nakasod niya po ng init dito. Or you have a machine or uh, what's this, uh, mechanical dryer, something like that. And, and several other responses. Either for, for example, uh, there is a... Uh, uh, the wind now is becoming more and more stronger in terms of typhoon and other uh, weather abnormality. So, what happened? You have to also adapt your technology. Develop varieties that are shorter and sturdy. Na di matumba. Kaya sa una, ang variety, halos tupong sa tao. Ang variety. So, what happens? Naihangin, matumba siya. Pag matumba, very poor quality ang imong palay. Kaya madaot man siya. Okay? Now, another thing is agribusiness also has changed. No? Agribusiness has changed in terms of functional area. Well, sa una, manual. Karun, anay, ano, storage. Na po ay uh, facilities in terms of uh, howling. No? So, to make an agribusiness system functional, a lot of coordination and adjustments are needed. <coughs> in other words, Agribusiness this time needs to co to coordinate with a lot of many other factors involved in ano in uh, in the production of agricultural commodity, okay? Like for example, planting of uh, pineapple or planting of bananas. Don't you know na ang pineapple plantation or maybe banana plantation na na is like kaugalingon nga meteorologist weather forecaster. So, una, di na kinahangla. Kaya, tanong ka, harvest mo yung kakaroon. It has to time with weather pattern. Tumamuingon ang meteorologist nga, this is the right uh, ano, uh, combination. This is the right time to plant. Yan to, kung tanong ka, muhangan sa labas buwan, aka ni, o tibuok na, tanong na ta. O, something like that. But this time, several other uh, climatic and weather factors are being considered and uh, assess in order to synchronize our operation with the manufacturing operation. There are a lot of uh, factors that we need to synchronize. Then, if it is becoming more and more complicated, then we need to also <coughs> find ourselves in terms of what are the important external factors affecting agribusiness, okay? <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry. Somewhere at the middle, okay, somewhere at the middle is the actual actual agribusiness activity going on. Okay? 
somewhere at the middle. Now, there are external factors that is going to disrupt the operation of agribusiness so that without considering them, it can make or unmake our agribusiness activity and it can make or unmake the profitability or viability of agribusiness enterprise. Remember, these are kanina sa tunga, this is what, what we call as the dynamics, the actual dynamics of agribusiness activity. You have the different players here in the middle. Now, this is what we call as internal boundary. Okay. You have the information system, financial flow, etc. This is what you call as your internal uh, boundary. But there are factors outside the boundary we call external factors that can actually disrupt totally your agribusiness activity. What are they? You have climatic factors. You have sociocultural factors. You have legal and political factors and technical and economic factors. These are external factors. That means to say agribusiness has become, in fact, more complicated because there are a lot of other external factors that is going to be considered in order to make agribusiness more competitive because in in uh, ano, in uh, in uh, the game in the market now is being able to uh, really outdo your competitor okay because it is a battle between the competitive and the non competitive okay so if you are competitive enough then you can make business and survive in the market but if you are not competitive then you are you will just die down of natural death in the industry okay you need to be competitive in terms of quality in terms of technology in terms of price and in terms of cost okay these are the we call it the the dimensions of competitiveness okay now you have to deal with this in order to keep the dynamics inside firm and robust and viable in the, in the at the end of the line no so you can you keep the rigidity and the viability of agribusiness inside how will you deal with technical factors do you have the machineries how do you deal with political factors are you even do you even know what are the <coughs> legal impediments you are owning a piece of property delicado ka no you are actually <coughs> you are actually cultivating something pero you have not considered whether that particular land that you are using for agribusiness unsa man are do you own that or you rented it or you just are illegal settlers nya pakaybalo pa nimo pag-ari man din sa mga indigenous people ama ah, file out the book ka map kick out ka anang imong giano you have to have enough sociocultural knowledge to be able to really suit your ano your activity in agribusiness fully to the needs and wants of your customers and then there is also another very important factor what about climatic and physical factors there is what we call as uh, testing your agribusiness enterprise in terms of vulnerability to weather anomaly or to weather uh, perturbation okay na kay plantation na kay processing area na locate ka diha sa usa ka lugar nga profitable na kaayo kulang ang imong climatic and physical factors assessment why pag about sa storm surge na wipe out ang imong ano factory that is what exactly happens sa bino de coco processing in tacloban no? very profitable very promising uh, venture sa usa ka filipino uh, mechanical ano uh, chemical engineer from the US pero Pilipino siya from from uh, I think from Karigara or Haro Leyte nag put up siya og uh, distilling and bottling of uh, coconut wine in Tacloban somewhere in Marasba do also Marasbaras do all those my Robinsons aunahan sa Robinson ma somewhere close to Marasbaras no okay na kaayo 
failure pag study ani eh. what is the climatic and physical consideration and to siya nga layo ra man ning dagat but the general terrain in Tacloban is actually plain no plain ang Tacloban bura ra man ang peninsula hing abot ang Yolanda pag abot sa Yolanda inundated with sea water tanawa karon wala na diha they can have they have gone bankrupt all their set up the stealing and everything the lumos use dagat balik das america so you can see bino de coco no more in leyte lamit na bigyan ito itong coconut wine first ever na wine na nakasulod yun coconut wine ba na maay yun nakasulod yun sa supermarket nga it's also penetrating the global market failure to assess the risk of from chemical from climatic and physical factors so all these external factors is even making agribusiness more and more complicated but very strategic say for example way of dealing and managing all these external factors makes agribusiness more profitable and enjoyable for entrepreneur no so that is how agribusiness has become complicated as a system okay now so you have as a system also you have these factors uh, services consumers niche market and etc et no? and then these are factors uh, defining or expanding the agribusiness uh, boundaries no depending as ang inyong totoo ang inyong boundary no domestic ba mo domestic kinalan mo nga makasabot mo sa inyong market okay if you know also if you want to go to other ano Uh, mar other markets like abroad, you have to study your competitor. More than the operation involved involving the products from, from producer to consumer, the, this broader positioning expands agribusiness to reflect contemporary focus of agribusiness activity as dynamic system. No, so if you are if your market is within Eastern Visayas lang, now you have to be more particular about what are the essential factors that are really uh, unique in Eastern Messiahs and then deal with them. Okay? Now, this uh, particular topic, no? Particular topic, that is the end of Module 2.1 and I will proceed immediately to Module 2.2. No, Karon? Now, you have here online, no? Online, no? Uh, Uh, learning task. I'm going to give you, okay? I'm going to give you a quiz on this, no? Quiz. Now, please, uh, ato na ng quiz ninyo sa atong, ato, atong module, no? I will post a quiz there sa module, Moodle na tong classroom. Take note, it's in the Moodle classroom. I will post a quiz for this particular lesson. Okay? One or two questions lang for this particular lesson. Okay. Let's proceed to module 2.0, uh, lesson 2.3. There are only a few slides for this. Sustainability, inclusiveness, and resiliency. That's another uh, consideration in how the agribusiness is changing this time. So you are not only looking at agribusiness to be sustainable, but this time agribusiness also has to be inclusive. Okay? And not only inclusive, agribusiness has to be resilient. So we need to define and understand these three terms now. Okay? These are new concepts that add another layer to agribusiness system which become more and more complicated in a way. No? Now, first the concept of sustainability. I have I know I have uh, discussed that a while ago that sustainability is a method of harvesting resource so that the resource is not depleted permanently or damaged that means to say imo manang conserve para ang ubang generation maka enjoy pa niya anak meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generations to meet their own needs you see there is time element here to be sustainable you have to be uh, concerned about the current use and the future use of that particular product Ayaw hud tatanan, parang listan, in the, ano, in the, sa harvesting of uh, mga, ano, mga, mga fish in the sea. Ayaw panakpan ng mga gagmay pakaayaw. 
Otherwise, wala na isda sa maybe five or ten years from now. You ha we have to be sustainable. Sa US or sa other developed countries, makadakop nga na sila ng alimango or uh, uh, like for example, blue crab, no? makadakop nga na sila. Pagtanaw na lang na ibihod, ibalik yun sa dagat. Pero sa ato, sa alami ni kaya na ibihod, ato ning lapuan, awa na. Kaila nakabuok, makakaon dapat anang bihod kung kimuhian lang, total na may wala bihod dito, available. Ano yun sila? Dakpon yun ka, mamaligya ka na ay bidhan, baka na yung naibihod, no? Ang uh, kuala itlog sa crab pala na. Is na, na ay specific size. Makita ka nga nang nanakop ka o ano, na kanabitaw nga isda ng gangmay, dakpon yun ka. In Guam, oh, not, not Guam, not Guam, not Guam, US man ang Guam. In Guam, Eastern Summer. Kasi taga Summer din eh, take note, I am very heartened. No? I'm very disheartened, brother. I'm very disheartened. When I went to Guam Market, Guam in Eastern Summer niya, Eastern Summer, pagkalami sa lapu-lapu dito. In fact, magpalit dito ko ang lapu-lapu or kanang mga coral fish in ato dito kay Barato Giyud. And, Bakit ko pag yung kaayo? Yeah, ingon itong tagtindira nga, ang ngunta na ko sa suki. Nam, kanang na yung sama, yan na yung isda, na pula po. Mayada, sir, pero mahal yan na. Mahal ko no, mahal ka ron. Mahal yan na, sir. Maubah? Mahal di. Ay, pila mamahala. Tag 150 ang kilo. Ha? Mahal yun na yun. Big papalita kong napaw ka kilo. <laughs> Kay 150 din to. Sa merkado na na. Diris ato, pila? 380 to 400 ang lapo-lapo 1 kilo na then nga doon ko sa suki kuy nag-uol dyan ko ng tanaw namili na lang ko ingon ko nga uy agagbay pa ba aning uban uy pag ingon pag tulog ka tudlo ang lapo-lapo di kari lang ang imo sir mao ni amo yun 150 inyo ko no 80 man lang ini kung nga po inyo pumanig ito ako gagbay pa manig kaayo ingon ko nga rapid kaayo murag hapdos kaayo tanawan ba nga What will happen to the future generation? Ingo nang pangdakop ni mga piso pang lapu-lapu. Dag may pagyud. To adto mga dagko, mga puwan, mga tagsa ka kilo sa kabuo. Kani, ano ni mahal? To nga naram ka na sir nga dire mong kuno kita makapili dito ha. Ila room. Pwede uy, madakop na ninyo buhi ang gana ninyo. Ah pwede man na. So, wa gyud. Mao na ay danger sign sana maging responsible. Kinsa may taga summer din ni you are in doubt with very rich marine resources, take care of them. Kaya na, isun yung kaayo. Mahuntan ng isda, there is late take, summer, kung di na ninyo ang timano ng inyong mga, uh, mga marine ano, resources. So, sustainability is very important. Now, if you say sustainab sustainability, there are three things that are very important. Three P's. No? Tulo ka P. Di ba na, isa marketing. 4P sa marketing, 4P. Sa sustainability po, upat na ka P. You have, bantayan yun, you have planet, people, and profit. Kinahanglan na i-balance anang tulo. Kay kung profit ra ang nagpaswabi, you will destroy the planet or environment. And you will also compromise the, the needs of the people kung profit lang. Pero o planet rapog ka, pulos lang ka environment, wa po kayo nauna sa panginabuhi sa mga tao, that is also kind of unsustainable. Why? Magutom lang kita karon kay na pa'y generasyon, uh, muabot sa sunod, pila pa katuig, aron sila makakaon, di po na. And then, it has to be a good balance between planet, profit, and people. And then, makita na to din he, ang sustainable practice in agribusiness is one that is socially equitable, socially uh, acceptable, and environmentally like uh, also workable. And at the same time, it is also economically viable and at the same time uh, conserving or protecting also the environment. Okay? Viability, equitability, and acceptability. Then, Kana diyang sa tunga, convergent na you have a dynamic or sustainable system. Dili po hindi na, na pulos lang ta profit. Pulos lang po ta environment. Kinahang lang na ang balance aning three piece 
of sustainable sustainable agribusiness. Remember, na namoy upat ka traditional ano traditional export of agribusiness in the in the in the age that has that in the in the in the export market traditional export upat na kabuok na napoy tulo ka p three p's for sustainable agribusiness practice or enterprise planet people and profit okay resiliency okay resiliency the ability of the firm to cope with observe or absorb the external shock or ex extreme event that threatens the survival of business okay resilient ang ubang business dito sa global pag hapak yun sa yolanda ah uh, wara abdi o guan wara abdi o kana bang uh, six months one year balik back to business dayon pero ang uban na wipe out yun katung na wipe out wala nakabalik di do resilient katung ingon sa inyo nga uh, processing of to bino di koko sayang to kay nag, nag plano na sila nga mo mo put up og another plant diri sa baybay para sa coconut para mo harvest ani mga tuba diri himuon nga bino di koko kay grabe tayo Ang usa ka butilya 400 pesos. Pila na da? Wara ni usa ka, wara ni 2 ka litro nga uh, ang puhonan tuba. Wara ni 2 ka litro. Ya 400 ra. Pila nang litro? Abot lang ang usa ka galon kay tag 1 ramang. Kanang naay kalimot ko ko pila tong usa ka galon basta tag 80 ra nay palit usa ka container na tag 5 ka galon or tag 20 liters. Ya, yeah, 80 ra palit. No, so 20 liters. Tag 5 ra ang litro. O can you imagine? O 5 litro. Bisa pag 5 ka litro ang usa ka 400 ml nga nga bino. Tako ginan siya. Plus, no? So, mao nga, pag abot sa Yolanda, di man resilient. Wipe out. Those that bounce back better uh, na ano, na, na balik back to business. So, ginanan agribusiness must be resilient because especially in the Philippines we are kita gina sa front line sa disaster okay we are in the front line of all disastrous typhoon in the Pacific so resilient it has to have awareness and recognition of all serious threats in the supply chain the lang weather kana pong dynamics within the ano within the supply chain kalit lang brown out wa tay wala tay power ano power uh, what supply kalit lang brown out or nakalit lang kaputol ang internet kay uh, poor ang signal transaction na ato na putol wa na ta logi no ta then uh, some recommendations for resiliency proactive management of risk for identified in the first step and then investing in risk averting infrastructure kung kinahanglan nga naa kay power back up power magutang ta okay kung inhanglan nga naa kay what naa kay sa tawag ani kanang naa ay uh, 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 stable internet magutang pinang dapat yun no so that everything will be will will be able to increase our ability to manage risk and study our uh, resources availability in terms of how it can possibly respond very quickly to perturbations in the environment. Now, inclusiveness. This is a highly tossed around term, inclusiveness. Okay, there are various definitions of inclusiveness. No? First, FAO definition, you have connection or inclusion of small producers to agricultural value chains. Money FAO. And then another definition for inclusiveness, as of Sasriyat Puni, Centro International, Tropical, the Agricultura Tropical or International Center for Tropical Agriculture. Pero imang sumayo na dili na siyat ka nang isuwat niya. Siyat is Centro International Agricultura Tropical. Mga na siyat. Pero ang kanay, International Center for Tropical Agriculture sa English na nga translation. Business that are integ that integrate low-income groups into the value chain. Diri, small producers. Diri po, low-income groups. Because why? Na may small producer nga dili low income. Maayo ka kuan pero dili ang ila baya sila on low income groups. Timan ni baya ng mga low income groups ng mga producer 
kana bitang nan bangkabol na but that does not mean nga ug nan bangkabol nga nang dili suklan ug bangko ba nan bangkabol di na lang gini mo appeal sa value chain di ko na mao no money bias sa siya no un UNDP, ang ilang definitions inclusiveness, models that build bridges between poor people and the business community. Models that build bridges, poor and the business community. So, talagang linking, no? Oxfam, no? Oxfam. Enterprise that adapt their buying practices, supply chain, marketing strategy, and company operation for small holder sourcing. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> there are several other definitions. Ang, ang ano ang ang center ng gitna ni enjoying no enjoying the connection between the ano the connection between smallholder producer group with the business community okay that is inclusiveness now ang iapil dapat ang mga pobre iapil dapat da, sa ano sa uh, ang mga agad may mga processing mga business activity uh, business enterprise into the entire dynamics of the value chain Inclusivity implies economic and social and environmental value with mutual benefits for poor. Bias good sa poor ang inclusiveness. Money very important also po for agribusiness nga. Dili ka mag-put up business nga. Ano nga, kuan lang, automate ka na. Kung tanaw ni mo nga, makatabang ka sa community, employ people by going into a good mix between Capital intensity and labor intensity. No, tadi lang tama purely capital intensive. Mu labor intensive po tayong may kaeron pa ka employee po tayong mga tao din sa atong atong location. Kaya hindi nato na isla employee na batuon palang tadi ni mawawa na ni atong factory. Something anak mo rin kung kaayo kaya nambang kaya nga unang pero it's really real. No, wamatay po wamatay ko na para mga tao sa barrio nga wamatay wamay probinsya ni nga Factory na sa itong lungsod, ato ning bato. Kaya yung naman ng mga, mga tambay na sa mga barrio, magbantay ka. But then, very importantly, very important mga napok kay social responsibility. Make these people employable. That's the end of this 2.3. Okay? Remember, sustainable, resilient, and also inclusive. Okay? Sustainability, tulok ka buo ang important like yardstick of sustainability. Okay? So, I'm, again, next meeting, I'm going to give you a quiz, but here, ang 2.2 o 2.3, usara ka quiz. Okay? Usara na ka quiz. So, bantayan ninyo. Okay? Usara na ka question, ako nang ipadala sa Moodle Classroom nato. Okay? So, that's the end of our lecture, Karon. Because I have another lecture this afternoon, sumpay sa inyo sa usaka section. Any question? Any question from from the class? No, sir. Ah, no, very good. Sir. No, the, uh, are we on the same page? So kasabot mo? Yes, sir. Oh, good. No, I think uh, uh, it's really also rewarding for me. Uh, I'm telling a story and yan ka communicate po tapa, no? So I will stop sharing and also stop recording this time.